So today I'll be talking to you about Soriyama, Toriyama Sekian's Night Procession of 100 Demons. How a catalogue of creatures captured, changed and created a culture. So firstly, um, I hope you've enjoyed the slideshow of a selection of pages from the encyclopedia while you've been waiting for us to start. Between 1776 and 1784 in Edo, Japan, artist Toriyama Sekian created a woodblock print visual encyclopedia of supernatural spirits from folklore called the Yokai. The encyclopedia was so popular and no doubt lucrative that it became a four book series in which the artist progressed from recording known Yokai to inventing his own. Today I'm going to be discussing how this innovative 18th century encyclopedia of supernatural creatures captured, changed and created a culture in Japan and then went on to become a 21st century global cultural phenomenon. Just briefly, we'll be covering um, where um, the encyclopedia is in the exhibition, uh, when was it made and who was Toriyama, um, the process of transformation, how did the illustrated encyclopedia um, reduce the fear of the yokai and become entertaining? Um, how did Sekian transfer, transform yokai culture and then what happened next? Edo went crazy for yokai, yokai boomed in Japanese popular culture in the mid 20th century and um, in 2020 Amabie the yokai plague projector went viral. Um, we're going to finish with a fun video showing a night parade of 100 de demons uh, before going on to a question and answer. I'd like to do a quick shout out to Matt Alt and Hiroko Yoda for the excellent Japan Demonium Illustrated The Yokai Encyclopedias of Toriyama Sekiem. This is a recently released reproduction of the encyclopedia with English language translations and commentary. I've used it a lot in my research and it's just a truly impressive piece of scholarship. You'll hear me mention them as we go through. So where do we find Sekin's Illustrated Encyclopedia in the um, Yokai Parade Supernatural Monsters from Japan? So you can see it here, it's in the middle of the screen um, and it's in the section, the richly colorful world of yokai. Um, there is a double page spread from the encyclopedia. There's no color, barely any text, just black and white printed images of a couple of creatures in a landscape. Walking around the exhibition or flicking through the book, most people would probably just glance quickly at it before moving on to other colourful, dynamic, bolder artworks around it, uh, especially the Nish Nishikie um, brocade pictures. However, this plain, simple book, almost like a child's picture book, shows some of the oldest representations of yokai in the exhibition. It's from 1776. It's arguably the most significant work in the exhibition, given its impact on yokai culture, Japanese culture more widely, and popular culture today. The catalogue entry for Sekian's book describes it as a pioneer, which I argue understates its importance. So where are we and when? Japanese and Edo in 1776. Um, Toriyama Sekin created the night procession of 100 demons in Edo, Japan in 1776. 1776 was the time to live in Edo. Uh, between 1603 and 1868, known as the Edo period, Edo was the seat of the Tokugawa shogunate and de facto ca uh, capital of Japan. Now known as Tokyo, it was the largest city in the world with 1.3 million residents. At the same time, Beijing, the next closest in size, was under 900,000, London 750,000, and the largest city in America, Philadelphia, was only um, 40,000. So take a look at the map, you can see that it um, was huge. Um, Edo was um, 
Ada was the centre of a feudal class-based society where artisans such as Sekin and the merchants who sold his books were at the bottom of the social ladder, ladder even lower than peasants. We're going to do a little side trip here into the Yoshiwara. Yoshiwara is just outside Tokyo. It's called The Floating World and this is where the encyclopedia was born and where it was published. This is the pleasure quarter. It, it was full of tea house brothels where men went for drinking and entertainment. It was the cool place. Lots of entertainment venues, theatre, bookshops, artist workshops, etc. It attracted artists, poets, performers in the kabuki and the no plays, um, wealthy uh, gentlemen, monks, all sorts of people. Um, they played games and they socialised and had um, passionate love affairs. It was a place of fantasy and of escape and of fun. And it created this great opportunity for social mixing between the classes. And this um, fueled a boom in popular culture. You can see how busy it was uh, from this image um, by Toriai Kayutada 1. Um, so this is from 1745, so it's just before um, Sekian was doing his, um, his, his encyclopedia. It probably looked very similar. So this was a time of stability, peace and prosperity as people from all over Japan were leaving the provinces, coming together in the urban centres, bringing with them and sharing stories from their hometowns, including those about their local spirits. Also at that this time, reading was a favourite pastime. The population was highly literate, um, which fueled a thriving commercial printing industry. Booksellers commissioned books to be sold in their shops and they were produced by artists, carvers, etc. Who and they would print many to recover their costs. There were 917 publishers of woodblock printed books and prints in the city. The printing technology come from Korea to Japan in the 16th century. Woodblock prints were easily and cheaply replicable and um, perfect for a mass market and they could print full colour images. The blocks used to make the prints could be kept or they could be shaved down and reused. Seconds were kept and reprinted a number of times so they obviously sold very well. There was a wide variety of genres of um, books produced including encyclopedias, um, which were already very popular before Sekian produced his. So in this image here, um, you can see a print by Hokusai showing the shop of influential publisher Sutea Jazaburo. Um, and it doesn't look that different to a bookshop today, I don't think. So who was Toriyama Sekian? We don't have a photo, so I've showing you a nice image instead, uh, sorry, a picture. Um, his Toriyama Sekin is a pen name. His actual name was Sano Toyufusa. He came from a high-ranking family who were servants to the Shogun. They were wealthy and they, con they were connected and this enabled him to be trained in Kano drawing and painting, which was um, the fine art of the era. He had a really long career and he died in his mid-70s. He pioneered new techniques, adapted Kano painting to woodblock printing, and tutored pupils Utagawa and Utamuro, who went on to become stars in the Yukioe and Japanese art world, and led to the Japanese May movement in Europe. Um, he also influenced Kuniyoshi and Hokusai, and Hokusai drew, drew 4,000 sketches of yokai manga over 15 volumes, so there was definitely a strong influence there. Despite um, Sekian's innovation, influ influence and, and reputation at the time, he's now only remembered for his entertaining encyclopedias, as much of his other work um, hasn't survived. But this work was significant because he combined yokai visual culture and folklore and an encyclopedia methodology and form to create a whole new art form. So here in this image we can see an idealised scene at the woodblock printer's workshop by Utamuro, who was a pupil of Setigan. This um, shows brocade woodblock prints 
being um, drawn, carved, and the size applied. And this is being done by beauties. Um, they would not be the normal people um, working uh, to produce the books. So let's talk about the yokai. Um, what are they? Yokai means strange or alluring mystery. Yokai are spirits, souls, or a life force or an energy that exists in all things. They are the embodiment of a moment, a feeling of dread and bewilderment, or awe and wonder over an extraordinary event. They might be a strange sound, a peculiar sense that demands an explanation, an ineffable phenomenon explained only by a supernatural entity. Traditionally, they evolve out of the very real fears of the people. They, um, they're believed to feel emotions such as happiness, sadness, or anger. They're a source of fear because their behavior is unpredictable. They might be benevolent or they might be malevolent, you just don't know. Um, they're believed to have existed throughout Japan since at least the eighth century, rise, arising from a mixture of animistic Shinto, Buddhist, and Taoist belief systems. Um, people would hold rituals to keep their local spirits happy, to appease or prevent their wrath, or to control them. So there's a rich culture of um, yokai found in folklore, and, and there's an old tra tradition of oral tradition of tales that have been handed down. There's a few different types: um, shape-shifting animals, water spirits, city goals. Oni, which are ogres and demons, Mononoko, which are strange things, Ayakashi, which are spooky things, and Bakamono, which are transformed things. There's a particular type called a Tsukumogami, which are objects that acquire a spirit and turn into yokai after turning 100 years old. Old tools can become infuriated and seek revenge if they're tossed away. So owners would either throw tools away um, before this happened, or they would perform a ritual to show gratitude to the tools before um, getting rid of them. Um, the entirety of Sekian's fourth encyclopedia is about Sukomagami. Uh, just quickly, what is a night parade of a hundred demons? Um, this is from the 8th century. The hundred is not a specific number. It just means many or uncountable. Um, they were a frequent subject of scrolls. Um, were beautifully painted like the one on the screen. Um, but these, spectacular as they are, uh, were limited in, in distribution as each one was hand-painted for a wealthy patron. Sekian had previously created um, painted scrolls on the subject of Parades of 100 Demons. Um, you can see sections of his Parade of 100 Demons um, on the screen. And as you will see, these are a forerunner to his printed books. So, what was the encyclopedia? Why was it significant? So, there was a series of four books with three volumes each. They were published between 1776 and 1784, and then they were reissued by a new publisher in 1805. All the images that you see today from the encyclopedia are from this 1805 printer. Um, the first book, uh, from 1776 uh, was the night procession of 100 de demons and this became the name for the whole set. The second one was the illustrated demon horde from past and present continued. More of the demon horde from past and present was the third and then the fourth was called a horde of haunted housewares. Um, as I said before 100 demons is not actually 100. Now, this is significant, the encyclopedia, because it consolidated stories and images from old scrolls and prints and folklore. It wasn't a scroll, it was a book, so it could be mass produced and disseminated, and also it could function as a database or a reference work. It standardised the appearance of the yokai, and it was entertaining and humorous. According to Matt Alt, the images teem with jokes, 
self-deprecating humour, linguistic wordplay, puns and cultural, literary and um, religious references and philosophical references. So it's actually quite coded and sometimes cryptic and it was really challenging for them to translate. So the illustration on the screen on the left, um, we have a kaoso or a river otter. It is known to be a trickster and a shapeshifter who is able to take on human form, especially that of a beautiful woman who would try to bewitch unwary travellers. It is depicted wearing a rice straw hat traditionally worn by sake sellers and carrying a bucket of sake. This image is from book one, so the text just provides the creature's name. The creature on the right is a kappa, which we will talk about soon. That's going to pull the curtain here. Okay. So what does the encyclopedia look like? The 1805 edition was bound in blue cover printed with flowers and birds, as you saw in the first slide. Um, the pages will be open from what we consider to be the back, so you turn the pages from left to right. Um, it was a woodblock print on paper, and you can see a link to a video at the end to see how they're made. They were laid out with one image to a page, but sometimes a single image would be spread across the two facing pages. The illustrations that face each other um, are designed to complement each other, so the whole two pages is, um, is unified. Um, the encyclopedia started with showing um, just the yokai image, the environment and the name. Uh, but as can be seen in the images that you're looking at now from Book 4, Volume 3, A Horde of Haunted Housewares, later, these later entries were expanded to include not just the name, but a description, a storage, a story, and also in some cases, um, a instruction of how to defend oneself against um, this particular yokai. The yokai we have on the screen at the moment on the left is the Ta'amatsu Maru, the torch. Um, Sekin visualizes and anthropomorphizes the phenomenon of flying light in the mountains. This is a yokai that Sekian dreamed, so he created. On the right, we have the Burra Burra or Sway Dangler. It's a haunted paper, paper lantern. Um, farmers uh, set up these lanterns to protect their fields from foxes. And this is uh, one that's obviously been abandoned um, and it's, it's become a spirit. And this is a Sukumagami uh, dream created by Sekian. I really love both of these images. Um, they're so dynamic. Um, you can see the movement that comes up and out from the center of the page. And I just really get this sense of Taomatsu Maru flying and Burabura swaying in the wind. Uh, you can also see in the bottom left um, the image of the Taomatsu Maru uh, from the painted scroll. So there's definitely um, some connection there. So the focus of my research is looking at this transformation of um, the yokai by the illustrated encyclopedia from being um, creatures that, uh, that created fear into creatures that became fun and entertainment and eventually um, creatures that were cute. Um, so how did the encyclopedia function to actually make people less afraid of the yokai? Firstly, they documented their appearance in a visual image. So rather than being something that people couldn't really see, they could actually see them for the first time. Um, this um, fixed it as a type. Um, so it became a standalone character with a name, an image and a habitat. And this would be used by book printers and other artists as a reference through the year. So you'll see these um, appear and, and they'll look pretty similar. Um, it made the yokai familiar. The illustrated the illustrations were coded with things people knew literature poems people places so they could read the images um, much more easily than we can today um, the images made the yokai humorous and ridiculous they were satirical made them something to laugh at 
And as we know from Harry Potter and the Bogart, the best way to overcome fear is to laugh at it. Um, later books also provided these strategies for defense against the, um, against the yokai, um, which obviously would, um, if you know how to defeat it, why would you be afraid of it? So the image we see on the screen at the moment is a kappa. And again, on the left, we have the scroll image and on the right, um, the image from the encyclopedia. Um, a kappa is an amphibious yokai. They're typically depicted as green, human-like beings with webbed hands and feet and a turtle-like carapace on their backs. A depression on its head call its, called its dish retains water. And if this is damaged or its liquid is lost, either through spilling or drying up, the kappa is severely weakened. The kappa are known to favour cucumbers and love to engage in sumo wrestling. They're often accused of assaulting humans in water and removing a mythical organ called the shurikodama from their victim's anus. Kappa are obsessed with politeness, so if a person makes a deep bow, it will return the gesture. But this results in the kappa spilling the water held in the dish on their head, and it can't leave the bowing position until the plate has been refilled with water from the river in which it lives. So if a person refills it, the kappa will serve that person for all eternity. So that's quite a roller coaster. So um, there's another main reason that the encyclopedia made yokai less frightening, and that is because it disconnected the yokai from the sites of their power. And there are a number of these sites. So it shifted um, the kappa from their traditional, physical and, and local sites where these stories originated. The stories were no longer local, but became universal with uh, generic scenes uh, represented in the encyclopedia. This shifted the yokai to other places. So not here in this village, but elsewhere, that's where these things happen. Um, and with this change in the point of origination, um, rather than stories evolving out of local experiences, they became characters to create new stories about. So, how, how the um, yokai were created changed. Um, they were also removed from the liminal spaces between the known and the unknown, um, and the shift from being barely seen to being recognised. Um, they also became disconnected from their traditional stories and the folklore, um, and they were transferred from an oral tradition of, of storytelling um, that was mutable subject to change to being fixed on the page. They were removed from the mysterious unknown supernatural world to the known natural world. And weirdly, um, it made these unreal a type and a subset of the real in the encyclopedia. And this relocated um, the yokai in people's perception and their psyche, and it shifted the onus of control to the person. Um, as the creatures went from being invisible to visible, from the ambiguous and the strange to the recognisable and familiar, and from the unpredictable to the predictable. Uh, the impact it had on how people think about the yokai was, I no longer fear you, I can see you clearly, I know what you are, I can name you, you are familiar, I know where I'll find you, and that it will be natural to find you in that place, I can predict what you will do, I can defend myself against you, I'll probably laugh at you. So the knowledge and the humour conquers the fear. In this image we have the Akaname. This creature takes the form of a small child who visits the bathrooms and wash houses of the unhygienic, where it licks the surfaces of toilets, baths and sinks. While on the surface this might make it look clean, the Saliva of the Akaname carries virulent diseases. So you might want to hope you don't see that one. So let's look at how Sekian um, transformed yokai culture. So the impact of his encyclopedia was that it transformed the creation and the interaction and the function and the perception of yokai. He created his own yokai on a huge scale with this So I Dreamed in the preface to the fourth book. 
he invented over 80 yokai for his encyclopedia. And this opened the way for anyone to create a yokai or to invent a story about one. If he could do it, anyone can. And this transformed and it freed the yokai. Instead of the yokai evolving narratively out of local experiences, creating them became a pastime following the Sekian's lead. The created yokai made the traditional yokai appear created too. They became fantasy figures. If someone could make them up, maybe they were all made up. This changed the perception of yokai and led to a lessening of belief in the existence of the spirits. Um, people began creatively interacting with the yokai and this made the yokai culturally active and transformed them from frightening and unpredictable to controlled and fun. The yokai became a creative resource or a database of characters for storytellers. From the woodblock, the woodblock printers used the encyclopedia as a reference book and used the images as templates. Multiple narratives could be created um, and developed around the characteristics of the yokai. And Sekian's catalogue went from collecting and remixing stories and images to imagining and creating yokai. This makes you wonder, did he actually become the yokai god as a result of this creation? Um, so all of these led to the function of the yokai, becoming one of entertainment and pastime rather than a warning or an explanation of mysteries. Now in this image, we have the Tenjanami. This is the late night liquor of ceilings, invented by Toriyama Sekian, who writes, the heights of the ceiling devour the lamplight when the winter is cold. This is not by design. You will shiver in fear if you catch a glimpse of this strange apparition and know that it is no dream. It comes out of the darkness on cold winter nights and laps away at any accumulated frost or dirt or spider webs clinging to the rafters. You know the next day if you have had a visit from the Tenjanami by the dark streaks it leaves behind. Evidence of its long red tongue being dragged along the ceiling. If you catch sight of a Tenjanami while it is doing its business, you die. So don't look up when you go to bed. Um, people would play a game called Hyako Monogatari Kadankai, a gathering of 100 supernatural tales, also known as Kadan. People would gather to tell 100 tales. They would light 100 candles in a room and they would invent and share spooky stories and tales of mysterious occurrences. After each story, they would blow out a candle, so the room would get darker and darker as the night progressed and I assume as people got drunker and drunker. And they'll keep on going until the last candle was blown out, which would have been pretty scary, I expect. But there is another version of the story that said that after reaching 99 candles, they would stop out of fear of invoking the spirits. And you can see in the image on the left, um, this is a nighttime scene of the Yoshi world. I can't see any candles, so I don't think that they are playing this game, but this just gives you an, an idea of what the night, nightlife um, looks like. So what happened next? There was a creation of a whole yokai culture in Edo. The encyclopedia just blew it up, as can be seen in the exhibition. Sekin's encyclopedia is the earliest dated object, which led to other expressions in culture during the Edo period. The culture expanded to children's cards and games, 3D objects such as the Netsuke, kimono patterns, the Hyako Monogatari, which is 100 stories, a book of ghost stories based on um, the game, game I just mentioned. There were illustrated books of stories and more encyclopedias. Um, there was kabuki theatre, literature and stories, and most importantly at all, there were the woodblock printers with um, woodblock posters, which um, would appear, would um, people would put up on their walls. And this can be very much seen in the, um, in the exhibition. 
um, especially the Nishi Kie, the brocade pictures, which are multicolored woodblock block prints. Probably the most well known of these images is the Yukioe woodblock triptych above that was created by Sekin's pupil Utagawa Kuniyoshi. It is called the Takiyasha, the Witch and the Skeleton Spectre. Kuniyoshi was known for his depictions of historical and mythical scenes and combined both in portraying the 10th century princess Takiyasha summoning a skeletal, skeleton spectre to frighten Oya no Mits, Mitsukuni. In the image, the princess recites a spell written on a hand scroll, you can see her on the left, summoning a giant skeleton. It rears out of the black void, crashing its way through the tattered palace blinds with its bony fingers to menace Mitsukuni and his companion. Um, Tekian's um, Yokai Encyclopedias became the foundation for Japan's global pop culture um, and exemplifies the movement from the, of the yokai um, from being uh, scary creatures to those that are fun and then on to those that are cute. Um, so in the 1960s, yokai characters and stories um, were mined and transformed to create popular culture. In 1968, Shigeru Mizuki created the TV series Gegege no Kitaro, which was remade in 2007 and again in 2018. A warning if you plan to watch them, the theme tune is very hard to get out of your head. In 1968, also the original Great Yokai War movie um, was uh, released. Uh, there were also novels by Kiyogoko Natsuhiko. Since then, um, the yokai have developed into a thriving global contemporary culture, including from 1985, Studio Ghibli movies, including Pompoko, Spirited Away, and My Neighbor Totoro. And then, of course, there are the multimedia franchises about collecting cute creatures with magical powers that you just want to be friends with. They're popular because it's not just about the yokai characters, but it's about collecting and cataloging. So it continues the um, Sekian Encyclopedia tradition. Um, the yokai watch franchise includes role playing games, video games, manga, anime, TV shows, and movies, etc. Whereas the Pokemon franchise includes games, TV series, movies, trading cards, and Pokemon Go, including the Pokedex which is an encyclopedia that is a direct descendant of Sekian's. The game involves adventuring through a fantasy world to collect creatures of various sizes to, um, sorry, various types to make a complete set. Uh, more recently, we have seen the great um, Yokai War movie, uh, 2005, so remade, and the great Yokai War Guardians in 2021. There have been numerous other TV shows and movies, anime, live action, kids, adults, and horror, as well as manga and literature. So this has created this, this thriving um, visual art creative community. If you Google yokai and go to images, it's just stunning what people have created. There's also a thriving exhibition culture and um, the Art Gallery of New South, South Wales held an exhibition in 2019 called Japan Supernatural. And I made it to that one and it was great. So in 2021, the Amabi Yokai Plague Protector went viral. So this is an example of how um, this transformation from scary to uh, fun and then to cute um, can be seen in this latest Yokai craze that emerged with the pandemic. Amabie, who first appeared in 19, 1846, so was created post uh, Sekian Encyclopedia, had, had been mostly forgotten, but is an auspicious yokai. As the story goes, a government official was investigating a mysterious green light in the water in the former Higo province. When she, or maybe he, arrived at the spot of the light, a glowing green creature with fishy scales, long hair, 
three fin-like legs and a beak emerged from the sea. <coughs> Amabi introduced itself to the man and predicted two things. A rich harvest would bless Japan for the next six years and a pandemic would ravage the country. However, the mysterious merchant person instructed that in order to stave off the disease, people should draw an image of it and share it with as many people as possible. So perfect for the social media age. In 1846, a woodblock print of the yokai's likeness was published in the local newspaper and its image soon spread. As COVID-19 swept through Japan, a media was revived in the hopes of warding off the infectious disease. According to Google Trends, the mythical yokai resurfaced in early March 2020 and its popularity spread with the hashtag Amoebi Challenge um, appearing in English. In addition to the tens of thousands of paintings, drawings and personalised depictions of Amoebi on Twitter and Instagram, people in Japan began selling face masks and hand sanitizers with Amoebi's image on them. Media is truly the yokai from pandemic in a social media age. <clears throat> Here we have a couple more images of Media. On the left, she is looking fabulous. Note the little mask that she wears. Um, she's the glamour girl savior of the pandemic who looks like she's been styled by a Kardashian. And then on the right, a confectioner made these um, cute little sweets too. So to sum up, we put the yokai through um, Tekken Seconds Encyclopedia were transformed from scary creatures to humorous, satirical, fun, entertaining creatures, and most lately to cute, adorable little friends. <coughs> so if you would like to find out more, about yokai or some of the background I touched on today. You can check out the sources on the screen. Here's books, movies, and TV shows. Handouts are available in the library. Um, those in the webinar can take some screenshots or um, I believe David might have um, put some in the comments. So um, as you can see, there's quite a lot there. <coughs> And in this screen, we have documentaries and YouTube videos covering everything from yokai to the Yukioe um, Yoshiwara life to the woodblock printing and then Japanese art history, um, the NHK Japan Japanology Plus documentaries, and more Japan history. There's also the music that you would have heard earlier, uh, links to that and also um, some um, links to where you can see the images uh, and even more of the yokai images uh, that you saw today. So our final image. I hope my talk today will help you look at the artworks in the yokai parade exhibition in a whole new light, maybe send you off to explore some new yokai culture. A final image from Seki and tonight is the tanuki or raccoon dog creature from folklore. These are real life animals known for being tricksters and pranksters. The modern version feature enormous testicles called a pouch in the movie subtitles, which they stretch for all sorts of eye opening uses. It's known for drumming its belly with its hands as shown in this image. We'll be finishing up with my favorite modern night parade of 100 demons. This is an excerpt from the Studio Ghibli 1994 film Pom Popo. This is about a clan of raccoon dogs who attempt to scare a local town into not destroying and building on the, um, their forest home. But then they stage a magical night parade of 100 demons. However, the response of the citizens demonstrate the culmination of the cultural change process begun by Toriyama Sekin and that led to the yokai losing their ability to scare and becoming entertaining figures of fun, much to the um, disappointment of the Chinooki in the movie. Questions and answers will be after the video, um, please put them in the chat. <coughs>